if it manages to get into the entire ocean conveyor, it could turn the entire planet into an ice age. But it's unlikely to do that. It's only likely to actually shut down the Atlantic conveyor because of where the leak is situated in the Gulf of Mexico. The first thing it hits when it comes out of the Gulf is the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream takes it to the North Atlantic. So the oil will accumulate in the North Atlantic, so it will shut down the North Atlantic conveyor, and this will bring an ice age to a very, very large part of the Northern Hemisphere. And that's the best of the worst-case scenario, folks. You see, if the leak isn't plugged, if this is a legitimate leak, if it isn't plugged, it will eventually empty into the North Atlantic. We'll probably see a collapse of seafloor in the Gulf of Mexico, which could go, I mean, folks, we don't know how big this oil field is. We saw the two volcanoes erupt in Guatemala and Ecuador. I mean, we could conceivably lose the entire Central American region if the plate collapses. Because this will be forming gas bubbles. They'll be doing all sorts of stuff underground, folks. This is um, a very, very significant event if this is a real oil deposit. If it's just a volcanic deposit, well, that's something else. But still, it's, it's a very significant event. So if they don't cap it, and they won't be able to cap it from the top, they'll The only way they'll be able to cap it will be from the bottom. So if they don't cap it, then it is very likely to shut down the North Atlantic conveyor. This is a worst-case scenario. But like I said, shutting down just the North Atlantic conveyor and just turning the Northern Hemisphere into an ice age at least gives us the Southern Hemisphere, which will still be able to support life, and so it won't kill the entire planet. So if that was to happen, where would the ruling elite go? Perhaps they would go to a country that is very fertile, that has a great deal of resources, that is one of the largest, most isolated land masses on Earth, has one of the lowest populations on Earth, and it's a place where the citizens had already been disarmed, so there was no way to combat any type of ruling elite or any type of new world order that was set up in the country. And if you already had underground bases set up in such a country and there was a very small population in the country compared to land mass, what would be the problem with freezing over the Northern Hemisphere? Now in a film that I put out in 2008 called The Big Picture, I mentioned that Australia was going to be one of the new headquarters for the New World Order. And when one thinks about the Georgia Guidestones, it mentions that the ideal population on Earth would be around 500 million. Well, how many people do you think exist in the Southern Hemisphere, folks? And I'm sure if it's more than 500 million, then it would be pretty easy to marginalized countries such as Africa, possibly Indonesia, which are already reasonably marginalized. So one really must wonder about such things. Now, admittedly, what I've presented for you is a worst-case scenario. There's other scenarios. I really would expect to see a subsidence of ocean floor, which would very likely produce some major tsunamis. Even if that's just localised to the Gulf of Mexico region, I would still expect tsunamis of some description should the ocean floor collapse in any way, shape or form. But I think that people are failing to see that this is truly a global problem, folks. It's not an American problem. It's not a problem that is localised to the Gulf of Mexico. This is a very significant problem. Perhaps it is just a mud volcano. They are using it in order to spray neurotoxins such as Corexit 9500 in the water. This is going to come down in acid rain and it's going to cause a mass evacuation of the southern United States into the already prepared FEMA camps. Perhaps that's what's going to happen. Or perhaps they've found a better way to reduce the population to 500 million. Whatever the future holds, folks, 
I think we're in for a very interesting ride. But whatever it does hold, I do still maintain and firmly believe and always shall that the most important thing through this whole period is the energetic state of the human consciousness. I think that we had every opportunity to address the corruption in our world. I think that we've known that it's there for a very long time, but we've refused to acknowledge it. I spent most of my life researching, and I've spent the last four or five years solely dedicated to trying to wake the consciousness up, wake humankind up to the very clear and present danger that we as a species are facing from ourselves, from the governments and societies that we've created. But it's been very hard to get people to listen. If this event in the Gulf of Mexico is a legitimate oil leak from a very deep oil deposit, as we are being told, then it would appear that we may have now passed the point of no return. It may appear that we have now reached the period where the big test is coming. And the most important thing, folks, through this test is to understand what reality is, to understand that it's all about energy, and to maintain your energetic state through this period of change. That's really the most important thing that any of us can do. Well, that's about it for the show again today, folks. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. I love you all very much. Please consider some of the things that I try to bring to you on the show. Please consider some of the information that I present. But also understand that all I'm really offering you is my perspective. All I can do is look at what's available and come to an opinion. Hopefully, it's an informed one. When I speak out about these things and all the things that I do to try to wake people up to this new world order and even to wake people up to the dangers we may possibly be facing from this oil spill, I don't do it from fear, folks. It's important that you understand that. I don't speak out the way I do because of fear for the future. I speak out the way I do because of the empathy that I hold for my fellow humankind. Even if this Gulf of Mexico oil spill is a terminal event, what I care about is the energetic state of all of you through this transitional period. If it's a false flag, if it's simply being done for other reasons, political reasons, what I still care about is the energetic state of my fellow human beings. That's why I do what I do, folks. My main goal through all of these broadcasts is to keep the frequency of this planet high through this period of change. And I think there should be no doubt in anybody's minds that we are in a period of change now, folks. This oil spill everything that's going on, the whole political and economic situation, everything, folks, everything that's going on indicates a period of very great change. So there should be no doubt of this. All I am attempting to do with these shows is to help maintain the energetic state of the collective human consciousness through this period. Well, that's it for me for the day anyway, folks. It's been a pleasure to talk to you again. I thank you very much for listening. Please do remember to join in the Great Intention every week, 10 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, every Saturday night. That equates to 8 a.m. here on the east coast of Australia. Do remember to stay in the correct energetic state, folks. And remember, folks, all of the negative information that comes to you and all the things that are happening in the world, it's, it's all a matter of perspective. Once you understand what reality is, then there's nothing to fear. I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Please continue to visit thecrowhouse.com. I thank you for any help that you've given me. It's sorely needed these days. And I love you all. I'll speak to you next week. In La Cache.